What's going on, everybody? It's Bogo Sports, and I'm here to make my UFC 288 picks. It's been a while since I've uploaded a video, but I want to make a quick video making my picks for this weekend's fights. So we're going to start at the bottom and move towards the main card. So the first fight is Joseph Holmes versus Claudio Hibero. I've never seen Hibero fight. Holmes have I've seen him fight in the past. Um, he did miss weight by three pounds, so I'm gonna I'm gonna make my pick as Joseph Holmes to win. There was a fight between Zalgas Zumagulov and Rafael Estevam, <clears throat> and that was scrapped due to a weight miss. So the next fight will be Ikram Aliskarov. These names are crazy. Versus Phil Haas. Now, I don't know the first guy, but Phil Haas, I've seen him fight in the past, and he seems like he has a lot of potential. He just gets caught in the wrong moment. So I'm going to pick him to win this fight. The next fight is Parker Porter versus Braxton Smith. Now, once again, I don't know Braxton Smith, but Parker Porter, he fought. He's done well in the past, but he just got knocked out on the card that was Islam versus Volk. And I feel like that's pretty soon to be turning around a fight. So I'm going to pick the guy Braxton, Braxton Smith. Although I could kind of see Parker probably winning a nice decision. Okay, some better fights. Virna Jandradova versus Marina Rodriguez. I'm definitely picking Marina Rodriguez in this fight. She looked like she was a uh, win away from a title shot before she lost her last fight by knockout. I think she really kind of got caught. You know, she fought a lot. I feel like, you know, she could have gotten a title shot well before that last fight. So I think this is a good bounce back fight for her, and I'm going to pick her to win probably by decision. But I, she could get a KO. She's one of the female fighters I really like to watch. All right, so the next fight is Rolando Bedoya versus Chaos Williams. I really only know Chaos Williams in this matchup, and this guy's really powerful. It's been a little while since he's fought, but I'm going to pick him to win this fight as well, probably by knockout. So the next fight is Devin Clark versus Kennedy and Chukwu, and Zichukwu. And I feel like this is, uh, you know, these are both vets, but this is going to be a very, uh, this could be a very dirty fight. You know, it could be a lot of clinching against the octagon, but I'm going to pick Nzichukwu. Um, You know, I, he's a tall fighter. He had a good win in his last fight against Kutulaba. So I'm going to pick him to win here, and he could stop him. Um, You know, I, I feel like it's like a 60-40, 60%. It's going to be hugging against the cage. But the 40%, it could be a, a finish or an interesting fight. So I'm going to pick Nzichukwu to win that one. So now we get to this. These are the sick fights, in my opinion. So this is the prelim main event, um, the prelim headliner, Drew Dober versus Matt Favola. And this might be the best fight on the entire card, really. Drew Dober has been on a KO streak. He just finished by knocking out Bobby Green and facing Matt Favola, who left the UFC and came back and got an epic uh, KO in his last fight against this dude that was undefeated. They're both super exciting personalities, super exciting fighters. They come in and, you know, go guns blazing. I'm going to pick Drew Dober. I feel like he's just a little bit more in his prime right now on a good run he's crazy powerful so is Favola but uh we saw Favola get knocked out by Terrence McKinney and I feel like <clears throat> Drew Dober I just don't see him getting knocked out and I see him getting the knockout win but it's gonna be a barn runner for as long as it lasts so moving to the main card now this is the most stacked main card ever but it is you know there's some interesting fights so starting with Crone Gracie versus Charles Jordan main card opener Crone Gracie, obviously the name speaks for itself. He was in the UFC before. I believe he got a win and then lost to Cub Swanson and hasn't fought in a good amount of time. But, you know, I think two two to four years, something around that range, a very long time, four, I think. Facing off against Charles Jourdain, who's kind of, you know, he's a young fighter, seems to have a lot of potential, but he's lost a few fights here and there. Um, he lost his last fight versus Nathaniel Wood, and, and it was kind of a beatdown. So... I think uh, Jordan's looking to bounce back, and I'm going to pick him here because he's a more active fighter. He is a really good fighter as well. I'm not, you know, not even though he's had a couple L's here and there, he does seem to be a guy I think could be in the top 15. Now, Crone Gracie is also a really good fighter. You know, he showed well in his first two fights, but I feel like the time off is going to affect him in this match, and I'm going to give it to Charles Jordan. And I'll have Jordan win a decision. I'll have him win a decision. I can see it being more of a stand up fight, even though <clears throat> Gracie. You know, the name speaks to his pedigree on the ground. Okay, so now the next fight would have been amazing. It would have been Bryce Mitchell versus Movsar Vloyev. But Bryce Mitchell pulled out this week, so something must have been wrong. I'm not sure, but I really wanted to see that fight. But Movsar Vloyev, I'm very high on this guy as far as a, a potential title contender in the future. He just hasn't really fought enough. But his last fight against Dan Ige, he really looked like almost, you know, a guy like Colby at featherweight. Amazing takedowns, great volume on the feet. Uh, very, you know, he seemed defensively sound. 
uh, with his with his defense and his striking. Uh, not the best striking, but it was good enough. And his takedowns were amazing and his control and relentless pressure. So he's going to get it done against this guy, Diego Lopez, coming in on short notice. You know, I feel like it could be he's gotten a lot of decisions in his career, but this could be a stoppage in the second or third round, pretty much just from the pressure he puts on him and the pace could tire out his opponent. So now we have Jessica Andrade versus Yan Xiaonan. Both fighters, they really, you know, Andrade is the former champion and she was on like a massive run and then just got beat by Aaron Blanchfield and Yan Xiaonan lost to Carlos Bars. I just feel like this isn't, there's not much in this fight for me that of interest. So I'm going to pick Andrade. I mean, she seems to beat everybody. I was really shocked when she lost to, to Blanchfield. She pretty much only loses to like champions or former champions. So I'm not too excited for this fight, if I'm being honest. Okay, co-main event. This this um, fight card, this pay-per-view, um, which would be crazy. I just don't... The people that pay 85 bucks to watch this by yourself, I mean, credit to you, but I'm going somewhere to watch it or or streaming it because this is just... 85 bucks for this, at, you know, no, not happening. But the top two fights are incredible. And Gilbert Burns and Bilal Muhammad came in and saved this card. Gosh, right now I'm forgetting who pulled out. Uh, oh, it was Charles Oliveira versus Benil Dariush, which would have been amazing. These guys came in and saved it. And Dana White has said that the winner of this is going to get the title shot after Colby versus Leon. So this is a huge fight. I am not a Bilal Muhammad fan. I am definitely a Gilbert Burns uh, fan as far as his fighting goes. And he's a pretty cool dude. I'm definitely going to pick uh, Gilbert Burns here to win. I feel like he's just the better fighter everywhere. You know, Bilal Muhammad's had some good wins recently, but they're all decisions except for that Sean Brady one. And they just... I just don't I don't buy him being a top five contender. Respect to him, but I just don't buy him being a top five contender. I really feel like he has a really obnoxious personality. And he's very, you know, out there on certain things that I'm not really lined up with on him uh with him on. So that's why I'm rooting for Burns. But <clears throat> I think in a stylistic matchup, excuse me. <clears throat> I think in a stylistic matchup, this is a great matchup for Burns. Uh, you know, former uh jujitsu champion. I just don't see anything, uh, Bilal having anything from on the ground. Bilal is more of a control wrestler. Uh, Burns has good takedown defense, great wrestling himself, and he's fine to be off his back. Uh, you know, if Bilal tries, thinks he's going to be able to control Burns for five rounds, because this is an interesting five-round co-main event. Not all, not all non-title fight co-main events are five rounds. So, you know, there is a short, out, short notice aspect to this. It could get wonky. Burns just fought, but... I feel like on the feet, his power is tremendous. Uh, he has a decent gas tank. Bur uh, Bilal definitely has the advantage in the gas tank. But I just don't see Burns gassing out to the pressure like Sean Brady did. And Burns will be able to keep Bilal off of him. If Bilal thinks he's going to walk him down like he did Sean Brady, he's going to eat a lot of shots and get knocked out probably. So this is a crazy fight uh, as far as, you know, a stylistic matchup. But I think, I I think it favors Burns in every way and so i'm gonna pick burns to win i'm gonna pick burns to win by i feel like knockouts the obvious so i'm gonna go by submission uh i could see you know him hurting Bilal, and then Bilal basically like diving into a guillotine or something like that you know like shooting a shot right after he gets hit with a big punch and jumping into a guillotine i could see that happening but either way i'm picking burns and he'll be next in line for the title after colby faces leon which is a fight you know i really want to see okay main event Aljamain Sterling versus Henry Cejudo, the Olympic champion and double champ coming back after three years to face Aljamain Sterling, the bantamweight champion, who a lot of people feel, you know, have, have a lot of uh, strong opinions about, you know, based off his title run. He got the title by the knee. Then he beat Jan in, a, I thought, a good win, but it was controversial in, in the fact that it was a very close decision. And then his next fight, he mauled TJ Dillashaw, but TJ Dillashaw had one arm. So it's just been an unfortunate title reign for Aljamain Sterling. But you can't deny how dominant this guy is as a, as a uh, fighter and a champion now. So this matchup is so so hard to predict. I tend to lean right now that Aljamain Sterling is going to win. Now I think on paper Cejudo should be the cha uh, should be the favorite. He's a former champion. His only loss like in recent years is to Demetrius Johnson. That was at flyweight. He's a Olympic champion. Aljamain Sterling is a grappler. How are you going? You know Olympic Olympic wrestler, Olympic gold medalist wrestler. You don't have a lot of, you know, you're not going to really say that some Division three wrestler has better grappling than him. But I do. So I think Cejudo should be the favorite. But I'm going to pick Sterling in this matchup for a couple reasons. The first being Cejudo's 36 years old and he's been out of the game for three years. 
at these lighter weight classes, it's been seen, uh, you know, I actually heard a stat that for every weight class, 170 pounds and below, only two times has a fighter over uh, like 36 or older won. It was like two out of 26 or something. And it was both times it was uh, Tyrod Woodley. So, I mean, that's a crazy stat that shows you in these lighter weight classes, age, you know, when you hit those late, mid to late thirties, it has, you can't go as long basically, you know, and, and heavyweight, we all know this. If, if you're a fan, you can, you kind of know heavyweight, light heavyweight, middleweight, you can go into your later years. You can go into your late thirties and forties and still be a champion like Glover Teixeira. But at the lower weight classes, speed and durability, speed being the main factor, when that goes, you're at a significant disadvantage to the younger fighters that are still in their prime. I think the three years off could have an effect. Now, I don't want to doubt an Olympic champion. You know, somebody with Suhudo's pedigree, you know, he's going to come in shape. But I think well, it'll be it'll be seen. I think that could play a factor, though. And the other thing is his size. Suhudo was a former flyweight. He's never going to get that huge. Uh, Aljamain Sterling weighs like 165 to 170 pounds when he's outside of his fights. And he fights at 135. You look at him today, I mean, he looked like that weight cut was very difficult for him, but he's shown he's able to go five rounds with it, and he's massive. I think when I watched TJ Dillashaw, he looked so much bigger than TJ. I know TJ had one arm, and that's not, you know, the best representation of him in the cage, but he looked huge against TJ Dillashaw, and I think there's a chance he looks a lot bigger than Henry Cejudo. I think that size can play a factor and mitigate some of the differences in technique in the wrestling. You know, sometimes strength can... Can, and athleticism, which Aljamain Sterling has both of, can help. But let's not. Uh, but I want to make sure to note: I don't think he's a scrub on the mat either. His grappling is his strength, and particularly his jiu-jitsu and his ability to get to the back and get a rear naked choke. I don't see him doing that to Henry. I don't see him getting a. I, I just don't see him backpacking Henry. I, I could see him backpacking if he gets to the back. I just don't see him finishing Henry, especially a lot of wrestlers. They just got that thick neck, and they're really hard to choke. I, I think. It's going to be hard for him to get a rear naked choke on Henry. In a scramble, he might be able to take his back. But I think he has the grappling ability to, if Henry wants to mix it up, I think Aljo can hang with him because of his size, athleticism, and his grappling technique. I think the grappling is going to be pretty close. And in the jiu-jitsu realm, it's Aljamain Sterling all day. So I guess I'd say the wrestling is going to be close. But in the jiu-jitsu realm, it's Aljamain Sterling. So the, whole, the grappling exchanges are going to be interesting if they happen. Now, on the feet, Henry Cejudo is a much more technical striker. Aljamain Sterling's hands, in my opinion, aren't the best. And Henry Cejudo has knocked people out with his hands. So I would definitely lean Cejudo. He knows how to control distance. But Sterling's size, like I say, he's very lanky fighter for 135. He has good kicks. Very like He throws out a lot of kicks because he's not worried about defending takedowns. So I think he might be able to keep Henry at range, especially if he lands a good body kick or some sort of spinning attack early that makes Henry respect him I think that could be you know very helpful for him and in, in hanging around in the stand-up so it's going to be an interesting fight I like you know I said that I don't think Sterling is going to be able to submit Cejudo but I think he could maybe control him at times especially if he gets his back he could hang on there for an entire round and the whole round goes to, Cejudo, uh, to Sterling so based off that breakdown I mean look it's a 50-50 fight in my opinion you know, you could lean towards Cejudo, like I said, as a favorite. But I'm going to pick Sterling to win. And I think, you know, both fighters are saying this is going to be a decision. Or, sorry, a finish early. I think this is probably going to... There's a good chance it goes to decision, in my opinion. So for that reason, I'm going to pick uh, Aljamain Sterling by decision. So like I said, those are my picks. Uh, you know, I'll keep track of them. And, you know, let me know your opinion below. You know, we got these fights tomorrow, so... I'd like to hear what you guys think, particularly about the co-main and main event. As I said, those are the two best fights on this card, and I can't wait for it. But also, Drew Dober versus Matt Favola is a great fight. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. First video back in a long time, and get ready for more content. Peace.